I prioritize based on our needs, not our wants, but our needs. So I guess give us a big thumbs up. Good morning, my, or afternoon. My cuddle bugs is me, Anna Marie, and I am coming with you with another car chat. On today's episode of Car Chat, we are going to talk about a, sus- a subscriber <laughs> requested, and I'm driving, so that means I'll be looking around, okay? A subscriber requested um, topic, and that is, how did I budget as a single mom for all those years? Well, now I'm engaged, so. <laughs> how did I budget as a single mom that was making $15 an hour? So, $15 an hour, let me just be honest, it's not the worst you could do when you're a single parent. It's not the worst that you could be making. You could be making seven, I don't know, what is that Wisconsin minimum wage? Seven fifty, seven seventy five right now. It's going to go up. Anyways, at $15 an hour, I was working 40 hours a week. And so, I'd bring home bi-weekly about $1,200. Um, and that's, that's exactly what I brought home every two weeks. Um... And I had the same pay since 2014 to 20, just this year in March, honestly, to 2019. Um, Because I got a pay increase by getting myself educated. And over those last five years, I've been at the same company getting experience and transferring to different departments and getting departments and getting more experience. Anyway, that's not the topic. I'll tell you guys how I made the jump from 15 an hour to a salaried position um, in a later date. We're talking about budgeting today. So, at $15 an hour, you bring home $1,200 a week. If rent is like $9.75 like it was, that's pretty much your whole paycheck, okay? (laughs) You have to pay rent, you have to pay utilities, like between rent and utilities, which was like water, um, electric, and I think I paid gas and electric together. Um, That was a whole paycheck for me. So, just an entire bi-weekly paycheck went to literally keeping a roof over mine and my son's head. Then came groceries, gas, medicine, and let's be honest, medicine was not in the budget. If we got sick, that was it. Like, I struggled so hard if we got sick, but that's not that, that, that's another topic too. So, with $1,200 bi-weekly, you have to figure in what's your everyday expenses. What's your most important priorities to pay for? Do you have to pay for childcare? Do you have to pay for rent? What kind of utilities are you paying for? So for me, I was paying nine seventy five rent. I think my utilities were around eighty bucks a month. And then, what? I can't remember. Water is like extra twenty or something. I think it was like extra twenty. I always just bulked it together because I have an Excel spreadsheet that I'll actually show you today. Um, and that's how I keep track of all my bills. I can't do it all in my head. Um, and then child care. So the thing with making $15 an hour in Wisconsin is that you are borderline for any kind of help. That means you might be able to go um, to the food pantry, but you're not going to be able to get food shared or like food stamps. Um, so you're very borderline. And because I was getting child support, so I get like 30 bucks a week for child or bi-weekly for child support. And because he wasn't doing very good at that time with the child support at all. But they were still figuring in that I'm supposed to get 120 a month. So even though I wasn't, the reason why I couldn't get like food share or anything like that was because he was supposed to be paying me $120 a month, which pushed me like 10 bucks over the limit to get food share. 10 bucks, you guys. Anyway, so I didn't have food share except for one very small little bit where he wasn't paying child support at all for like four months then we got like four months of food share which was very it was oh my gosh I could not oh my gosh we only got like 80 bucks but that was already over my budget already for groceries um so yeah so because of that I didn't get a lot of help however I did get some child care help so I was able to work only because the state was helping me pay some of that child care now, I was probably paying about 60% of the child care myself out of pocket, which is about $600 a month, 600 something, 600, 650 and, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and so, what is that? That's another half of another paycheck, 
I only get pay two paychecks a month, okay? So daycare is another priority. You gotta prioritize that one. So I would always pay bi-weekly for daycare. Um, and so I'd put my rent on my last check or split it between two checks and then I'd split the daycare cost between two for the month so that I paid bi-weekly. Yeah, it was $300 bi-weekly that I paid. And sometimes more than that because of enrollment fees and stuff like that. So that leaves like 600 bucks left, right? Okay, it's $40 of gas a week. So that's 80, that's 100 bucks. That's 500 bucks left. And then I had to buy groceries and my grocery budget was about $75. So there's like another 100 bucks gone because you know, this and that and whatever. <clears throat> so now we're down to 400 bucks. I had a credit card bill that I had to pay. We're down to 100 bucks, so that's 300 bucks left I think we're at. And then I had to pay, what else did I have to pay? Oh, my cell phone, another 100 bucks, <laughs> down to 200. And then medical bills that I had passed due that were 100 bucks a month. So that's another 100, now we're down to 100 dollars. And that had to go towards anything we needed. If Colton was sick and I needed $50 worth of medicine or of something that we had to do, but I literally never had that $100. I think it was because it, the MG&E fluctuate. I'd have to pay for car stuff. I'd have to like, I kept having issues with my car and having a mecha mechanic, kept having to pay co-pays to go to the dentist, to the to the freaking Dean Health because Colton, yes, he qualified for what is called Badger Care, which is like a HMO here um, in Wisconsin, but I still had to pay co-pays because of my income. So every visit was $30. And so anytime you had to go to the doctor, that was detrimental to us. Not to mention for the three years, 2014 through 2016, 2017, I had no benefits at work. Literally no benefits. So yeah it was just a really bad time and so we were literally living like by the time that everything was done for the month there was no room for extras need extra gas too bad you need extra medicine because you're sick too bad you need extra shoes because they're falling apart too bad i didn't get new clothes for five years but that's the thing you prior you have to prioritize what's important to your life um and what's important to my life is my son's well-being and my son's well-being, that means he needs food in his belly. That means he needs a roof over his head. He, we need a car to travel in. Well, we don't need a car to travel in, but in my city, we're having a car to travel in. And so that, for me, it was a priority. And you need health care. You need to not be sick. You need to be nourished. So put your priorities first. You have to be able to afford child care. So $15 an hour. I was able to skirt by with all that. And honestly, it was really hard. I can't imagine, like, if you make anything less than $15, like you make $14.15, you're not getting child support, you can get food share, kids' coats for kids, you can go to the food pantry, you can do all this stuff, but the second you make $15 an hour, that's your cutoff. Literally, your cutoff to like 90% of help. And you know, I think it's ridiculous because it took two of us to make a child, but only one of us is kind of suffering through this. And I wouldn't say suffering because I love my son and he's not a burden to me, but it made it very, very difficult. And I was going to school. <coughs> I went back to school in 2015. I just graduated in 2019. So textbook fees, I mean, there was just no money left over. So the way that I budget is Honestly, I prioritized and I prioritized based on our needs, not our wants, but our needs. So that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. Um, and I'm trying to teach one of my stepsisters this. You have to understand what is a need versus a want. Okay. Housing is a need. A new bed is a want. <laughs> you can live off the same bed for 20 years. Maybe it's not comfortable, but that's a want. You have a bed, so that would be a want. Okay, you need electricity so that you're warm or you're cool enough in the summer, especially when you have uh, uh, children and pets. Um, that's a need. What is a want? A want would be, I want pizza tonight. <laughs> like, we never went to eat. We never went anywhere. We just stayed at home. My friends stopped asking me to hang out because I literally couldn't pay a babysitter. I literally couldn't 
pay for my own dinner. Like, that's how stretched I was. But I made it happen. And somehow, with the glory of God's help, even if I, like, have to pay $200 extra for, like, something crazy like a tire on my car, God always seemed to help me provide to me. <laughs> um, and so one thing I used to do, I still do it if I see it, but I used to be really heavy on this, is uh, class action settlements. So if you don't know what class action settlements are, they're like rebates or uh, refunds for products that you have purchased that are going through lawsuits. You have to be 100% sure that you have bought these items, you've used these items. Like when it was Huggies, the, the Huggies diapers that I used on my son for years. You know, so I actually got a rebate check on those for like 50 bucks. Guess where that 50 bucks went? Straight the bills. <laughs> but those kind of things, you should look on that site, see if there's something that might have affected you. Because they're not always going to mail to you. You might have moved and stuff like that. So you could sign up for that um, and sign up for the ones that you, you that affected you, that you purchased. Sorry, I have an itch there. Um, that you purchased. And that that's like a surprise check that you forgot about because it takes about six months to a year to get it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I've been doing YouTube for quite a while, but honestly, I don't make anything like anything off of YouTube, <laughs> like maybe a hundred bucks every six months. Um, but I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it, you know, for the entertainment. I don't like to be bored. So, <laughs> and I like you guys. Um, but I have this budget spreadsheet that I'll show you. Hey guys, before I go over this which is my tracking device that I've used since 2014. I narrowed it down to like two different months paychecks with a bi-weekly paycheck. First, we gotta do a little math. So I was making $15 an hour times 40 hours a week, which equals $600. That's per week times two, because I got paid bi-weekly, equals $1,200 bi-weekly. Now, Minus taxes, minus social security, minus health, vision, dentist, etc., etc., etc. I was left with $966 bi weekly per paycheck. I was making a formula. So this is what we're living off of $966 uh, bi weekly per paycheck as a single mom with a child, okay? So, what I have over here is actually every single bill that I need to pay with my total income being $966 per paycheck. And so, these two take-homes would be 1,992 per month, so that was my income as a single parent for five years. And I'm, <laughs> I'm filming my screen, so it's good, my screen, so it's gonna be a little goofy, okay. So, here, column A, I have my paycheck dates. These are the dates that I got paid, what I got paid, which is 966. Trust me, it was the same for five years. I knew exactly what I was getting paid. <laughs> it would fluctuate, obviously, 900, 9, 997 or whatever, depending on the tax season, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the first thing, number one priority was rent. My rent at this time was $875. So, I have that in one of my lines. It happens to be second paycheck of the month. So that, first of all, let me tell you like this, this a total expense is a sum. So this is a formula, meaning that B, 164, all from here, all the way down to child support, that's all summed up into what I'm spending that month or that week. So that is the total of the bills I'm paying. So this minus this equals one, okay? What I bring home, Total bills I'm paying, how much is left over after those bills. Just so you guys know. Anyway, back to here. So, my rent is number one. So, I'd always take that out right before my second paycheck of the month. If it was a three paycheck month, it was a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> but, so, there's my rent. Next is electric because, you know, my baby has to be warm or we have to be nice and cool. We have to have our electricity because otherwise things won't work. Our refrigerator, no food, nothing. So, that ran me about 80 bucks a month. I was in a budget payment plan. Not every state has that, but usually it means like if I'm if I average eighty dollars a month and spend throughout an entire year, that's what they're gonna quote me as. Whether I pay too much or too little, I can get money back at the next end of the year to pay towards any of my past due bills. 
for the electric company, which is kind of cool. So I was at $80 a month. I knew what it was. Next, I had a car loan, $174 car loan, a car. Then car insurance, $99 a month. My cell phone was $75 a month, and that was because I was paying on my iPhone, and I had my service line and everything like that. Then daycare. So at this time, when I was making $15 an hour, the state did help me a little bit. So I was only paying $600 of daycare a month. Um, so I would put the daycare next. Now you can see that grocery isn't filled out. I'll get that to that in a second. I had to guarantee myself gas to get to work and back. I have to be able to work to be able to pay daycare and the rent, electricity, everything, okay? I didn't get any food share. So, <laughs> other income would be in case, like I did a side job and I, I got $100 or $50 or blah, blah, blah. So maybe I found $20 on the street. That would be other income, which obviously it's like never filled out, at least with these two examples. And then child support, I only get $30 bi-weekly. At this time, he was actually paying this. Not all the time has he paid. And after all this, without any grocery bill, I had $9 left over for the month after, you know, bills were due. Okay, so how is this manageable when I have a kid that got sick? There is no money for, for medical here, obviously, if he needs medicine or anything. There was $9, get me some eggs and bread. You know, so how did I pay for my groceries? That's a big question, right? Well, honestly, I'd have to go to some food pantries. And since I was borderline, some food pantries didn't even let me go there. So I went to some food pantries. And then when I did come across, like, you know, a little extra money, maybe I got a little more child support, maybe I did a side job, maybe it was my birthday and I got a little extra money, you know, tax time, I save extra money. So I would take that, any extra money I had, and put their groceries. Now my grocery budget had to be under 70 a month when I had extra money. So how did I do this if I couldn't find any extra money? Well, remember that budget payment plan here? This budget payment plan allowed me to be late on my, on my electric. So literally, usually I wouldn't pay electric. I'd let that go a month behind because if you're a month behind, you still get your electricity. It's not the best thing to do, but if you're really tight and you don't qualify for food stamps um, and you only have $9 left over after the whole month of bills, you cut something out that you can live. You cut something out that is reasonable, that you know you have to pay it, but you could set it aside for a week. So this next week, I would then pay that when I got paid. But it allowed me to keep food in my baby's belly. Now, how did I keep food in my baby's belly at $70? If I had that to spend for grocery, well, rice, beans, ramen noodles, mac and cheese, you know that we're big on our vegetables, so frozen vegetables are very cheap. Uh, send me an email with your email address and I can send you a blank copy of this template so that with the formatting already in it so that you can just fill it in and, and, and fill it out and you can see, oh, this is how much I have left over after this paycheck or I'm negative $50. I gotta do something like mow five lawns or something. <laughs> but yes, you guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped a little bit. I hope this answered some of your questions. Um, if it didn't, specify a little bit more in detail of what you else you would like to see. Like, how did I do this versus this and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to do another subscriber request, request a video, which is how did I make this kind of jump and pay? Um, how did I do that personally? Um, I'll make that video too. But if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that belly bell. Ding, ding. And you guys, um, I'm here to support you guys. I'm here to uh, inspire you guys to be the best people that you can be because we only have one life, honey. We only got one life. So let's be the best people we can be and defy the odds. All right. You guys have a wonderful day.